This is the GTN show and it is a packed one. We're going to be getting a little bit techy with a focus on a sport that quite often gets neglected in this area. Yep, we are delving into the world of swimming tech to find out what can make you faster. Yeah, we've also got some giveaway winners to announce. We've also got a new idea for an anticipated hot travel event that actually almost got rained off. Caption comp, we have got race news and of course your wonderful pictures to share. Could swimming actually be catching up with running and cycling when it comes to wearable tech? Well, we saw huge advances in the performance-related part of swimming tech when it was all about those swimsuits and the skins that actually covered the arms and the legs to increase performance, but they actually got banned by the world governing body of swimming, FINA, back in 2009. Yeah, so as a result, the emphasis now seems to be moving on to swim tech that can have more of a improvement in performance in the training environment, and as such, we're starting to see an awful lot of new initiatives that are coming onto the market. Well, one of which is Incus, and I was lucky enough to go and try this out firsthand up at Loughborough. So I headed up to find out a little bit more about this product. Now, it sits just at the top of the back of your spine and actually measures your body's positioning in the water, so your rotation, your pitch, and your yaw, and it gives you a huge amount of measurements and data from this. But I wanted to find out a little bit more before I got in the water, and I spoke to MD Chris Ruddock. Most people will be used to typical wrist-based trackers, which will give you things like your laps and your stroke count and those kind of metrics. With the Nova, we're able to understand your strokes, your breaths, your kicks on left and right hand sides independently. We're able to understand your body pitch, and your body roll through the stroke. And more importantly, we're able to understand how the person's actually moving through the water as a result of each stroke. So our analytics can do the maths in between to measure those inputs, the strokes, the breaths, the kicks, and those outputs, actually how much you're moving forwards do the mass in between to say what's working for you and what's not working for you as an athlete. And um, I mean, this sounds amazing. It sounds like, you know, you don't need a coach once you've got that, but how can coaches <laughs> and then athletes themselves use this? And what's, you know, what, what do you envisage it? How does it going to go into the market and, and who's going to be able to use it? So the system is entirely developed from the ground up with athletes and coaches in mind. So it's about providing high quality information for coaches that don't readily have that information for them. Um, for those that don't have a coach, it gives them that guidance through data. So it's about high quality information, but simple and easy to use. That's, we're not all sports scientists, so yeah. that's what it's about. It was really quite a simple test. I literally just had to swim a few lengths, and it's amazing how much data they actually took from that. And all of these numbers, which to start with, I was looking at didn't make any sense, but Chris and Liam talked through it, and then also using the app, the Incas Cloud, it just helped to actually put it into some layman speak of data that I could then take away and, and use. So it was really interesting. I mean, it does sound fascinating. So what actually, if anything, did they manage to tell you? Um, I mean, I was a bit worried because I was like, what's it going to show about my stroke? But interestingly, in my left arm, um, I have more velocity gain and I'm actually pull a bit stronger on the left, which I'm right-handed, so I was quite surprised at that. Not surprising, I rotate further to the right, which I guess makes sense because if the left is stronger, then I'm mm -hmm. going to go further that way. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a play around with sighting as well, um, which I think I could love to do a little bit more on that, but I naturally sight after a breath and that showed my stroke was much smoother than trying to sight before a breath. Yeah. But that's probably just because that's what I'm used to. And then they also looked at, at increasing my speed and seeing how that affected my stroke. And my stroke is much smoother and more even when I'm swimming faster, but obviously that I couldn't maintain. So there's so much more like to mm. it that you could actually end up you know, looking into. But also there's obviously so much more tech, including heart rate tech in swimming, which is really developing. And Polar have opened up this world, firstly with the Vantage watches, which we've both been using for a while. And the optical heart rate can actually measure your heart rate through the wrist, but it's designed to be able to work in the water as well. And they've now got a new device, the OH1 Plus, which fits onto your goggles. So it clips onto your goggle strap and this can then record your heart rate um, whilst you're swimming. And then your coach can have the Polar Beats app and actually look at the app and see what you're doing at the time or afterwards you can also have a look and analyze your heart rate data from that. So we just pop the device on our goggle strap close to our temple so that it can pick up our heart rate to give us that data. But the watches or the Vantage watches should I say are very well known for the fact that they do GPS and give us distance and speed and time out in the water but there's a whole raft of other functions that they can do as well. They can tell us what strokes we're swimming, how many strokes we've taken, so our stroke rate, they can really give us an awful lot more information than just how far we've been going, can't they? Yeah, there's another product quite similar to that, the Flex Edge, which we've actually talked about previously in the show, and it measures heart rate, so it sits again on the side of your goggles, and it actually does a little vibration if you set it to certain mm. zones that you want 
one to swim in. But all of these, you've actually got to stop to look at the data, obviously, unless you can somehow see your watch whilst you're swimming. So there's been a couple of developments recently that allow you to actually see data live whilst you're swimming along. And there's two new products which are just about to be released this summer, one of which is the form goggles, which we've actually talked about in last week's show. Well, these goggles have an option of 12 different metrics which they can display. Obviously, not all at once because it would get a little bit confusing whilst you're swimming. Yeah, well, I actually couldn't resist popping in the pool recently to throw them on and have a test drive, really, and I was genuinely impressed with what the form goggles gave me. I was just doing a quick set of 50, so I had the total time running on the screen and also told me the splits for those 50 meter reps, but I thought it was a great distraction technique, if nothing else, but really recommend them. I thought it was, uh, yeah, a really good tool, and you can get hold of the form goggles from August the 7th. Well, Fraser, they're not supposed to be distraction. They're supposed to help you with your swimming and help you to improve. Well, another product that's also designed to help is InstaBeat, and that's actually released a couple of weeks ago. And very similar, other than this, um, isn't actually your goggles. It's an attachment that sits mm. onto your goggles and can give you a heart rate reading whilst you're swimming along, as well as other data. But really just shows, I mean, this is just a, a, the sort of a selection that we've chosen, and the market in swimming tech is growing pretty fast. Okay, so let's say that you can choose one swimming metric to accurately record. What would you choose to do that and improve your performance? Well, that leads us on to this week's poll. We actually want to find out, and we're giving you the options of heart rate, swimming power, I mean, it's not even out there yet, but this is, you know, in the ideal futuristic world, stroke rate, your pace, or something different. Yeah, and we'd like to know, have you tried any swimming technologies, or if you haven't, what would you like to see in the future? So please let us know and drop those down there in the comment section below. Well, that takes us on to the results from last week's show, when we asked you, should athletes be allowed assistance when racing? And it's been a pretty torn um, set of results, to be honest. At the bottom, it came in at 12% for yes from your teammates. And then we had 15% uh, said only in the case of an emergency, which I can understand. Yeah, 19% said not from anybody. Hmm, which is, yeah, I can see that point. 24%, so a quarter there saying only from race officials. But just ahead with 30% saying yes from an external support team. Moving on, it is now time to announce the winners of our giveaway. Yeah, so we had a Mille GTNS jersey, and for the female winner, we have an Uma GTNS jersey. Well, the men's winner is Leon from Great Britain. We don't have his surname, but Leon, we've got your email, so don't worry, we'll be in touch with that jersey soon. Yeah, and the women's winner is Carmen, and Carmen is from Romania. Well, congratulations, guys. Perfect for this hot weather we've got at the moment. Well, it's now time for Try News. And yes, we've been going on about this hot weather recently. Well, there's actually a company who have focused on looking after our skin when we're racing, because if you're doing an Ironman, you're out there for a pretty long time. Well, Pelotan have actually teamed up with the Outlaw Triathlon, which was the weekend just gone, and they looked at the forecast and seen that it was gonna be supposedly extremely hot. Now, this sun cream is a roll-on version that they were going to provide in the transition area, so athletes could basically grab the Pelotan, they could, you know, roll it onto their skin whilst they're running through, and then there's a, an area where you could dump it at the other end. So just before going out onto the marathon, you could be out there for several hours in baking heat. You've actually got some skin protection that's supposed to be breathable and, and able to sweat through it as well. So a really great initiative for this triathlon. Yeah, it sounds like a fantastic idea, except the forecast maybe changed a little bit. And unfortunately, the athletes came out of the swim at the Outlaw, and rather than having to go through transition and jump on their bikes and off they go with the rest of the race, they were greeted with the news that actually they were stopping and it was becoming effectively a swim event with a, a forced gap, I guess, to wait until they could then get everybody out of the water and ready to then start a marathon. So not ideal at all for the poor people thinking they were gonna do a marathon distance, or full Ironman distance uh, Outlaw, but also for Peloton, who didn't really get to, um, um, have a lot of athletes using their um, sunscreen to see what they thought about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty extreme for an event to not be shortened beforehand. You know, it must have been a sudden, because we, we don't live that many hours away and I didn't see any rain no. on Sunday. So really unfortunate for those athletes and the organizers. So continuing on with a racing theme, we're really pleased to be able to talk about the fact that after a long hiatus from racing, Bermuda's Flora Duffy is 
rather excitably back on a start line because in two weeks time we have got the Olympic test event for the Tokyo Games next year and this is the first race since May 2018 that Flora is going to have been racing at. Yeah, I think she's going to be feeling a little bit rusty and she has said that she's obviously not going to be race fit because she hasn't done any races. So it's obviously an opportunity as an athlete, you're hoping to go to the Games, you need to practice on that course and see what it's all about. And then her target is if everything's okay to then race at the World Championships, which I think are only two weeks yep. after. So that's going to be quite a test to see if her foot is fully healed and whether she's ready for those worlds or she's just feeling a bit of pressure that she actually has to start racing because, you know, the Olympics are now a year away. It's, it's all getting a little bit tight. Yeah, it is. So we wish Flora all the best and hope to see her racing well again. Yeah. Right, so now we're on to having a look at your pictures that you sent us in. And we always like having a look at them. And we've got another selection this week of, well, quite an eclectic mix, really. First up is Helder and his Planet X DI2 Ultegra Stealth, which is uh, proudly in front of the um, New York skyline. Yeah, it's a pretty cool backdrop for certain. Um, enjoying the summer, getting out from Zwift and being indoors. So rather nice picture. Thanks yeah, for that one. I've never been to New Jersey, have you? Mm, I have. I've sailed up the Hudson. There we go. <laughs> Not rid of my bike there, though. Anyway, next one comes in from Farai, and it's a Giant Trinity Advanced Pro with a DI2, and it's a pretty swish-looking bike. Yeah, I mean, um, I think that it's quite funny that he, well, he's, he's described this as his second wife, which I'm not sure about what his <laughs> wife actually thinks about that, but a, a lovely picture here, and it's from a Cradle Moon Lodge Dam in South Africa. So thanks for sending that one in. It's a... Uh, looks very nice. Hope you're getting ready to race with all those uh, race yeah. wheels and things set up on that. Yeah, well, our next one here comes from Robin, and it's another Planet X. Yeah. Now, I don't know, Fraser, if that's your favourite of, uh, of this month or this week. Surprise, <laughs> it isn't actually Trek bikes that are making a feature here, because, you know, Fraser has Yeah, yeah, yeah that is my... I didn't actually <laughs> notice that we had two bikes in the little selection, but um, I did like the look of your uh, pain cave, Robin. It's looking very neat and tidy, isn't it? Yeah, so Robin says, I started swimming and cycling two years ago to help recovery from a running injury. It's the way so many people get into triathlon, isn't it? I got the bug and have now completed multiple triathlons, signed up for my first full iron. I love this sport so much to transform my life, also transform my dining room, which is now my pain cave. <laughs> which, Thanks for a great show. Which Aww. does look very good. I love all the numbers on the wall and medals and things. So, um, yeah, your setup there looks really good, doesn't it? It certainly does. Well, our final picture comes in from Digant, and it's his Merida Reacto 400 Lomplay Edition. And this is from India near Mumbai. Yeah, now, what took me to this picture, I certainly was, was held on it was the, the fact that he said was out on one of my favorite patches of road and had to take this picture because shortly after it rained heavily and made the whole ride that much sweeter but I'm struggling to see a road <laughs> in that picture. And, and if it rained heavily after yeah. there's already quite a lot of water there but uh, good luck I think you'd be better on a gravel bike yeah, well, but, we um, need to get... ambitious for the TT bars I like it <laughs> good yeah, stuff brilliant Right, it's now time for race news, and we've got plenty to cover. We're going to start with Ironman Hamburg. And in the women's race, it was a pretty dominant performance by Susie Cheatham. She had a slight sort of gap in her season early on when she was just recovering from a bit of a virus, but she's certainly back to top form now. She took the win in a time of 8.58, quite convincingly, but a strong run from Sarah Pampiano of the USA brought her up into second place, and then third place went to Julia Geyer from Germany. Now, we had an equally dominant performance on the men's side of things in Hamburg because Denmark's Christian Hogenhaug overcame a relatively poor swim relative to the other athletes in the field, but he entered T2 with over three minutes gap on the rest of the athletes behind, and he effectively never looked back. He held on for that win, which is his maiden Ironman victory. Second place went to Switzerland's Rudy Wild, who came through with a faster run, and third place, home athlete Paul Schuster from Germany. Next up, we've got Ironman Canada, and it was a women's only pro race, and it was a chance for home athlete Heather Wartell to shine at this event. She was just off the heels of Kelsey Withrow coming out of the swim, but then very strong bike performance led her into T2, and she didn't look back to take the overall win. It was second place, Jen Annette, and then third, it was Kelsey Withrow. And over in New York State, the Lake Placid Ironman was a male-only Ironman to counter Canada's female-only. And that was dominated by America's Matt Russell, and it was great to see him back at the very top level of Ironman racing after his horrific accident in Hawaii not so long ago. So he used the fastest bike split of the day to ride himself into the lead at T2, wasn't troubled thereafter, although Australia's Joe Gambles did pull through with the fastest marathon of the day to get himself into second, and third place was Mark Doolson from Germany. 
Now on to Ironman 70.3 Santa Rosa, and it was a pretty stacked field on the women's side. It was Paula Finley who looked to be having a really strong race and was dominating in the lead until T2, but she had two incredibly fast runners hot on her heels, Chelsea Sadara and Rini Carfrey. Now, it didn't take those athletes that long to whittle down that gap, and it was actually Chelsea Sadara who had the quickest run of the day to take the overall win. Marinda Carfrey came home in second, and Paula Finley managed to stay in the podium position for third. Yeah, close racing. And we we had some similarly close racing on the men's side in Santa Rosa. We had quite a few athletes coming out of the water quite close to each other, led by Eric Lagerstrom from the US. But actually, it was Sam Appleton who was just behind in second, Tim O'Donnell and Tim Reed who then surged forward on the bike. And indeed, those three came into T2 with quite a gap over the remainder of the field. And that really was the um, showdown for the medals, with Sam Appleton using the fastest run of the day to secure the victory. He's won in Santa Rosa many times. Second place went to home athlete Tim O'Donnell and former world 70.3 champ Tim Reed came third. Well, the final race for this week's race news is Alpe d'Huez, and it was dominated by the Ironman world champion Daniela Reef. And it seemed like she enjoyed the race as well, because on her Instagram, she's put, What an amazing day, swimming in a beautiful lake, followed by the most challenging and stunning bike course I have ever done in triathlon. Yeah, so not only did she actually cross that finish line as the first athlete, but she actually rode up that final climb of the race, the Alpe d'Huez itself, in the fastest bike split. They have a section on the triathlon for the um, climb up the Alpe, and she was faster than the entire men's field, which Impressive. is quite incredible. Even faster than Roman Guillaume, who took the win, and he himself was delighted with his victory. He said, I can't believe that I've won the mythic Alpe d'Huez triathlon. So, incredible racing from all of the athletes there. It's now time for the caption competition. And last week, we had this photo from the World Cup in Tissivaris. And as usual, some brilliant suggestions. And we've had to narrow it down to two runners up and a winner. And our first runner up comes from Y9 Annick says, I swear, guys, the fish I saw during the swim was this big. Which would be a bit scary if you were in the river in Tissivaris seeing a fish that big. But anyway, John uh, Phillips then comes in with, what do you mean the bubbles were turned off 10 minutes ago? Which <laughs> It's a bit worrying because there's a lot of bubbles in that jacuzzi. <laughs> <laughs> um, but our winner goes to Jonathan Gunnarsson, who gets himself one of these GTN caps with the caption, What do you mean I got a DNF? Are you insane? Which is clever. Yeah, like we that. like it. Well, for your chance to win a GTN swim cap, we've got a different picture this week. And it's actually one of myself from a recent swim shoot we did in a quarry, if you believe it. But it's pretty cool, amazingly clear water. But um, yeah, do let us know your caption suggestions in the comments section below. Now, we have quite a few exciting videos coming up in the next week. I was lucky to go over to Switzerland recently to visit the people at On Running to learn all about how a running shoe is made. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Yeah, and I know you and Mark are getting ready to head out to Norseman. Well, Mark's actually made a video on his kit list for that event. And then, as you saw, we've been doing some open water swimming filming recently, and we've got one on how to overcome your open water fear as well. And talking about open water swimming, if you fancy anything out of our shop that can keep you swimming, the caps are in all sorts of colours. We've also got our t-shirts we're wearing. There's some nice new running stuff in there too, isn't there? And of course, if you're feeling a little bit chilly, which I doubt you are, they've got the jackets in there too. Yeah, great stuff. And if you've enjoyed this, hit the thumb up button and find the globe on screen to subscribe to make sure you get all of our videos here at GTN. And it is open water season. I'm gonna bang on about it again. We've made a video on how to get ready ahead of your very first open water swim. And you can find that one just down here. Yeah, and if you want to see the test that Mark did on his DIY disc wheel, you can find that here.